Entrepreneur on Fire, episode 315. Fire, 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 fire. Today's most inspiring entrepreneurs delivered straight to you seven days a week. This is Entrepreneur on Fire. Fire. Here is your host who is always, always prepared to ignite, John Lee Dumas. Entrepreneur on Fire. Fire. Fire Nation. When I started my journey, I was alone. I had a vision and a whole lot of passion, but no one to support and help me along the way. What I needed was to join a mastermind, and that's exactly what I did. Now, I'm starting our masterminds, Fire Nation Elite. Visit FireNationElite.com to fill out your application and schedule a one-on-one 15-minute chat with me today. Okay, Fire Nation, let's get started. I am simply thrilled to introduce my guest today, Robert Graham. Robert, are you prepared to ignite? Affirmative. (laughs) All right. Robert is the co-founder of Arrow Advertising, the largest sign-spinning company slash franchise in the world. He is also the co-founder of Brander. Given Fire Nation just a little overview, Robert, but take a minute. Tell us about you personally. We want to get to know you and then give us an overview of your business. Okay. Um, Yeah. My name is Robert Graham. I I was born in Arizona and um, went to Arizona State University. Went to college and didn't really know what I wanted to do. Uh, ended up going into commercial real estate right after I graduated because a few of my friends had gone in and the real estate market was hot at the time. And I thought I was just going to go in and crush it and make a ton of money and everything was going to be great <laughs> and swell. And uh, so that's what I did. I went out and uh, I got a job and I started working for a company called the Stawback Company, um, which eventually merged with Jones Lang LaSalle. And uh, it was okay. You know, I went in and, uh, you know, I, I started making cold calls all day long and, and everybody in the office was 30 years older than I was. I was legitimately the youngest guy in the office by, you know, 25 years. So I didn't have a whole lot in common with, with anybody that I was working with. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I sat around and I made cold calls and I walked into office space and I learned all about it. And uh, I just, I was sitting there about six months in and I just, I was looking around and I, I just knew that, It wasn't what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. You know, I was looking at these guys and they were all coming in and I wouldn't say they were miserable, but they'd been doing the same thing day in and day out, you know, for the past 30 years. And it just, I saw my future and I didn't like it. So, um, I, I started talking to a friend of mine named Mike Kenny and Max Dorovic out in California and, um, our families, our, our our parents had all grown up together. They'd been family friends for a long time. And, um, Mike and Max actually have a very interesting story. So they, they were in college. We were all freshmen in college. And they, they both got jobs holding signs out on the corner uh, in San Diego, California for a local business. Um, and about 15 minutes after holding these signs, they, uh, they realized that this is the most boring job in the world. Like I'm standing, <laughs> outside, I'm standing outside. I'm holding a sign. You know, people are looking at me funny. I, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. So uh, they actually got pretty creative. They started spinning the sign and, and doing tricks with just these these random cardboard signs that these local businesses or this local business had had given them. And they noticed when people were driving by that they they you know started to smile and laugh and and were were noticing them when they were doing all these cool tricks and and kind of bouncing around and pointing at people and whatnot. So uh, you know their entrepreneurial spirit kicked in. They they walked into a, a local sign shop and, and customized their own sign. And uh, what I mean by that is they, they, they built a sign and they put some edging around the, the, the sides of it so that the signs were padded and people could actually – or the, they could actually you know, spin them and do tricks without cutting themselves or hurting themselves. So they went in and they customized their own sign, went back out for this local business and started doing you know, the tricks and whatnot and all the cool stuff that they were doing that, that were getting people's attention. And, uh, you know, very quickly after that, they realized, Hey, I could, I could turn this into a business. So they started walking around to all the local businesses in the area that they, that they were living in and saying, Hey, I'll go out there on the corner and I'll spin a sign for you guys. And, um, uh, you know, we'll get people in the door. It's, it's, it's great. People love us. And they got shot down like a million times. They were like, you're crazy. I'm not going to pay you to go out there and spin a sign. People won't be able to read the message, blah, blah, blah. Finally, one of the big clients, one of the first clients, the first client called relax the back, uh, was like, great, you know, go out there and do your thing and we'll see how it goes. 
So they went out there and they started spinning the signs on the weekends and they were driving an insane amount of traffic into the stores. People loved it. They were going, oh, your guys are so great. They make me laugh. They get my attention and um, so on and so forth. So I was talking to Mike and Max and, and, and heard about the idea of what they were doing and decided to bring it out to Arizona. So we started doing the exact same thing out in Arizona. We started hiring uh, young teenagers in the area and, and creating practices at local parks. We, um, we, we went out to local parks, wherever these kids were, and we started just teaching them the basics of spinning the sign and pointing, smiling, and waving at, at potential customers driving by. And uh, long story short, it grew into the largest sign spinning company and largest sign spinning franchise in the world. So that's, that's a little bit about aero advertising. Uh, I recently sold my equity stake in that company in 2012 to pursue other things. But uh, I mean, we had a blast doing it. It was a lot of fun. Very exciting stuff. And Robert, I can just tell you from experience that I've gone onto YouTube and you type in sign spinning competitions and you come up with these crazy people that are just doing these amazing things with signs at actual competitions. So it's truly taken a life all of us own. I mean, it's insane. It's a, it's a cult following. We have guys all over the country and all over the world now. And they, like you said, if you go onto YouTube and type in sign spinning, I mean, you'll see our kids everywhere. And what's really cool about it is you'll see kids posting, you know, tricks that they're doing in Europe and they're, they're calling out people in America. They're saying, hey, check out this new trick I just made up and they'll name it after themselves or a buddy or whatnot. And they'll have battles online. I mean, these guys are literally having sign spinning battles online of who's the best and what country is, is, is doing the best, what state is doing the best. And we have local competitions and then we have a, we have a, a national competition where we fly in all of the best sign spinners from around the world and around the country. And we have a competition in Las Vegas and we, we narrow down who is the, the best sign spinner in the world and they win a cash prize. It's a, it's a ton of fun. Wow, I was just really impressed when I was seeing those YouTube videos of people just going nuts, both the fans and the spinners themselves. Yeah, bananas. It's, it's a lot of fun. People, people enjoy it and the kids really love doing it. So Robert, we're now going to move into the next and really the first topic, which is the success goal. Because Entrepreneur on Fire, we love getting that motivational ball rolling. I'm personally already pumped up right now thinking about those crazy sign spinners and their fans. Just a lot of exciting stuff. But share with us a success quote that you love and why it resonates with you. Uh, my favorite success quote is, is probably by uh, a guy that some of you may have heard of called uh, Richard Branson. It's screw it, let's do it. And um, you know, that just really means a lot to me because I, I was working in commercial real estate and I was kind of doing the daily grind, living in the drone world. And I decided to, you know, take a risk and, and start my own thing and, and jump on board with two of my friends and, and build a, a company together. And it worked out. I mean, we, we ended up just absolutely killing it. And, um, you know, it was one of those things where I could have stayed in commercial real estate and, and, and did the same thing and, and, and made cold calls all day long and been bored and not really take any risks or I could have, you know, did what I did and, and went after my dreams and pursued my passions. And, um, you know, that's what I decided to do. And I, I can't be happier that I did. Well, Robert, I resonate with your story. I too was in commercial real estate going through that same gamut. I mean, I really was working for a great firm with a great future ahead of me, but it was just going to be that. I was going to be putting in the time into something that I wasn't truly passionate about. And there were people that were working with me that I did see that had a lot of passion for commercial real estate. And I'm glad for them because they found their right career. They found their right calling, but it was not me. For the listeners, you don't need to be submitted to the fate that you're at right now. You literally can adopt that mentality if you take it in the right manner, that screw it, let's do it mentality. At the very worst, you'll have fun doing it. So a lot of good things to talk about and to dive into. And Robert, Entrepreneur on Fire, it's about your journey as an entrepreneur. You're our spotlighted guest today. So take us back to a time when you failed. It wasn't all wins <laughs> in, in greatness and sign spinning competitions and people internationally loving what you're doing. There were some challenges and some obstacles that you faced. Share with us one story. Really take us there to that time when you failed and how'd you overcome that? <laughs> Man, there've been a few of them, uh, if, I'm, if I'm being honest. But I guess the, the biggest failure in, in my career to date has been um, going into the restaurant business, which I thought would be a fantastic idea. Um, you know, I was making good money uh, with, with aero advertising and I thought, you know, branching off and, and starting a restaurant would be, would be great. You know, we would kill it. It, it would be a lot of fun. And uh, man, that was, that was probably the worst failure that I've had. 
So take us there. Let's really hear that. So what was the first step you took down that road and when did it fail and how did it fail? Okay. So I was living in Arizona and I decided to open up a restaurant in Tempe. And um, I thought, you know, putting together a a cool creative concept with, uh, you know, fast food and, and a hot market by Arizona State University would do really, really well. And you always hear people say, you know, 97% of restaurants fail. And, uh, you know, I was like, screw that. I'll make it work. I, I know what I'm doing. I know how to start a business. I know how to run a business. But, um, man, the restaurant industry is tough. So I, I went into it, uh, you know, didn't realize that I was going to have to go through the nightmare of working with the cities and permitting and uh, all of that, that, that BS that goes along with opening up a restaurant. But uh, just the day-to-day operations, I mean, we had to hire, we had to, um, you know, stock all of our food, we had to watch spoilage, and those are the things that I didn't think about going into it. I thought it was going to be one of those things where I would just hire some people, I would oversee the operations, and we'd be great. And uh, that wasn't the case, you know, I was there day in and day out for 15 hours a day, you know, cleaning the dishes, working with our employees, um, you know, running back and forth to supermarkets to get food if we ran out. And uh, it was just crazy. I mean, we were breaking even for about a year and uh, we decided to shut the doors just because we we didn't see any money coming in. And we were working, you know, 15 hours a day and didn't have time to allocate any of our uh, any of our time to to, to other things that we were doing with, you know, the advertising company and and some of my other projects. But, um, you know, it was a great learning experience at the end of the day. I I realized that if you want to start, you know, a, a separate business in the food or bar industry that. You're, you're, you're most likely going to have to be an owner operator. And that's just not what I was about. I, I, I didn't have all the time in the world to spend there. And it wasn't what I was passionate about. And you could really see that in the business because, uh, you know, it just it didn't work for us. Sounds like reading Michael Gerber's E-Myth Revisited could have been a big help for you early on in that. Absolutely. <laughs> totally agree. So, Robert, what is just one clear lesson that you learned from that experience you can share with Fire Nation? I think one clear lesson that I learned is even if you fail, uh, you know, terribly as we did, you can always come back. You can always start a new business. You can always bounce back and uh, do things that you're passionate about. I wasn't really passionate about the food industry or, or, you know, owning a restaurant. I did it for the wrong reasons, Um, you know, making money. And uh, and and I thought the lifestyle would be great owning a restaurant. You know, I could entertain clients there. And uh, it's just not something that I was passionate about doing. I didn't really want to work. I wanted to hire people to do everything for me, and that just didn't work. I think that's just a great lesson on so many levels is that we often as entrepreneurs just come up with this worst case scenario. If we fail, we're going to be destitute. We're going to be homeless on the street begging for scraps of food. And that's just not the case. You fail as an entrepreneur every single day. And when you do fail as an overall with that business, you pick yourself up and you move on to that next level. There's not that massive wipeout failure that we always think about as that worst case scenario, which stops so many of us from even starting. So Great lesson, great takeaway, Robert. And we're going to move forward into another aspect of your journey because just like you have downs, just like you have failures, you have ups and you have ideas and you have inspirations that are coming to you. So share with Fire Nation an aha moment that you've had, just that light bulb that went off that really resonated with you. And how'd you turn that moment, Robert, into success? Man, I'm I'm going to have to revert back to Aero Advertising. The aha moment that we had was we could really turn this into a business, you know, rather than just us standing outside and spinning signs on the corner for uh, local shops, we could hire people. Uh, there, there were kids interested in going out and listening to music and spinning signs and making people happy and driving traffic into these different companies. And we could do it on a large scale. We could, you know, go to different states and hire, um, you know, general managers to go out there and spin instructors to go out there and teach our guys how to do all these tricks and to really change the game in that in that advertising realm. I mean, a lot of the times when we were driving by these guys holding signs on the corners, we were sitting there thinking, man, nobody's looking at this advertisement. You know, they're looking at this poor guy who's out there smoking a cigarette or on his cell phone, and he just looks miserable, like literally miserable. I mean, the ad d- didn't work. It was, you know, it was, it was terrible branding for that company because nobody was looking at that advertisement in a positive light. So we wanted to change the game. We wanted to, you know, hire energetic, young um, kids that would go out there in uniforms and they would sign in with these companies and sign out and they were, you know, on time and, and, and we were able to do that. And when we were able to, you know, put together a great team of people that, you know, looked presentable and that were, uh, you know, on time to their shifts, 
we were able to go after big clients like Verizon and Cricket and Lazy Boy and, you know, all these major home developers. And, and they loved us. I mean, they were like, you guys are fantastic. We love your guys. They look great. You know, all the tricks are really cool. You're driving a ton of people into our stores. And um, we were just able to build on top of that. I think that was that was really kind of the aha moment when we realized, hey, we could turn this into something much bigger. So you talked about franchising. Speak to Fire Nation quickly about the franchise process and what steps you took to make that part a reality. Right. So the franchising process, um, you know, started with with Arizona and then it just spread. I mean, we were able to um, really get a lot of great PR about what we were doing and we were always in the news and the YouTube videos. I mean, you could go online and type in Aero Advertising and you're going to see our guys everywhere. So it was hot. You know, people really enjoyed it and they were interested uh, uh, in the business. And, um, you know, the business model is great. It works. Uh, the margins are high. Um, you know, the, the employees are great. The model works. So uh, we had a lot of inbound calls coming in for for different franchisees and, and different territories that people wanted to open up. And we just had to see, OK, well, is this person going to be the right fit for Aero? Um, you know, are they going to be able to to work with with us and, and do all the day to day that makes each Aero advertising franchise uh, a success? And, um, you know, we've been all over the country and met with some of the, uh, you know, the, the franchisees that, that have been successful and the franchisees that, um, you know, have really taken it to the next level. And uh, it, it's worked out great for us. Very cool stuff. And did you guys have to go forward and get a patent on this before you actually went out and became franchises? Is that how the process worked? No, there's no actual patent on, on what we do. We just, we just turned it into something that was, you know, kind of boring and, and not very exciting. And we turned it into something great. We turned it into something special with what we do and, and the people that, 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 that work with us in our organization, whether it's, like I said, spin instructors who are the, the, the sign spinning coaches, uh, the general managers, um, the people in, in our corporate office. Um, but there is no patent on what we do. It's just we took the service to the next level and we were able to bring on a lot of you know, really great and, and large clients because they believed in us and, the, and because they saw um, you know, that our service works. So were franchisees coming to you because you had systems in place that they just wanted to adopt, almost a done-for-you program? Absolutely. It was, it was a, a done-for-you program. I mean, it was lined up. You, they came to us and they said, hey, we would love to open up a, a territory in Texas. And we would say, okay, well, here's, here's how we do it. We'll send one of our general managers and one of our spin instructors to Texas to start helping in, in the recruiting process and, and start going around to local businesses and getting – contract signed so that we can, you know, start working. And we built up the brand name to, to the point where, uh, you know, people knew about us. So when you walked in and, and said, hi, we're Aero advertising. We're the guys that do the, the cool sign spinning and the tricks in the corner. And we're going to drive a ton of people into your business. For the most part, people had a, a general idea of who we were and what we did. So, um, the, the sales process, you know, wasn't that hard and we were, we were able to piggyback off our larger clients that were nationwide when we started opening up franchises across the country and, um, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's pretty much the gist. So Robert, have you had an, I've made a moment? Yeah. I mean, I think the, I've made a moment is, is when Aero advertising went to a global scale. I mean, we were opening up franchises, uh, across the world. That's, that's a pretty big accomplishment. I mean, when you can say that you're a global franchise, uh, you know, that's something that that's pretty special. So that was definitely the, uh, you know, we've made it moment. So Robert, we've talked a lot about your journey as an entrepreneur. You've shared with us some challenges you face. You share with us some aha moments that you've had. All of this comes down to the journey of the entrepreneur. So talk to us about the mindset of an entrepreneur's journey and are you enjoying yours? Absolutely. I mean, I think the entrepreneur's mindset has to be, um, you know, I, I want to do what I'm passionate about and I want to do what I love and, and that's it. Like you have to fully commit to that. And, um, my journey has had some ups and downs, you know, we've been successful. I've had failures, um, you know, but I, I, I love what I do. I, I enjoy what I do. I wake up every morning excited to, to work on, on the projects that I'm working on. And, um, it's just been a blessing. I mean, I, I, I just, I can't, I can't imagine doing anything else. So I'm, I'm very excited about where I've been and where I'm going. 
Well, let's move to that point right now of where you are. Let's talk about your current business because you do have a lot of different things going on in different areas. But what's one thing that's just really exciting you right now that you can share with us? Man, my new business right now is called Brander, and I'm I am more excited about this business than I ever have been in 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 life and any other business that I've been a part of. Um, it's a, it's a very exciting, very very cool platform that myself and, and two of my partners have built out, and uh, we're just very excited about it. It's a it's a mobile platform, and we're connecting early stage entrepreneurs and product based companies with social media influencers. Brander is a a concept that I came up with with um, my two co-founders and we just saw a need. We saw um, these crowdfunding platforms exploding, Kickstarter, Indiegogo, and you know, all of the others that are online right now. And they're they're, they're pumping out all these great companies and getting funding for all these really exciting uh, cutting edge products and cutting edge companies. And we were like, man, this is great. This is a whole new way for, uh, for, for businesses to, to start and, and, you know, and to get funding. And uh, we were noticing that there's a, really, really, there's a lot of really cool companies coming off of these platforms that are getting a lot of exposure on Kickstarter and on Indiegogo. But once those campaigns are over, they're kind of hitting a wall you know, as far as advertising goes. They get a lot of exposure and then they, they get the money to build their product and then they really don't know where to go after that. Are they going to hire an ad agency, a PR firm? Are they going to uh, do a Google AdWords campaign? Maybe, but you know, a lot of the times those, those options are very expensive. So we built out a really cool platform that actually connects these entrepreneurs with social media influencers that are interested in their products. So what we do is we get the products in the hands of the social media influencers in exchange for them talking about the products on their platform on the social media platforms. And when they do so, we track all the analytical data on the back end, all the clicks, all the retweets, um, all the shares, who your top performers are. So we can go back to these companies and these brands and say, hey, we ran a great campaign for you and we drove 50,000 people to your website and we increased your sales by X amount this month. Um, So it's really a digital advertising platform, but our niche is we're really focusing on on these really cool cutting edge products that are coming off crowdfunding platforms every single day. And the crowdfunding platforms are exploding and pumping out all these new great technologies and all these new great companies. And we're really excited to be a part of that. Absolutely. And I mean, I can echo your sentiment, Robert, because I actually did a 10 part podcast series on crowdfunding of successful crowdfunding campaigns. And that was consistently over and over again. People were saying, I had this campaign, everything was going great. I got the money. And then I was almost like, okay, what's next? How can I keep growing? So it sounds like branders coming in and kind of filling that niche. Right. So we want to be the company. Okay. You go on Kickstarter, you get funded you have a product. Now what do I do? Well, I go to Brander and I push my product out to these social media influencers that can really help me become the next big thing and gain a ton of exposure for what I'm doing. Great insights. Thank you for sharing that, Robert. And we'll be linking up everything in the show notes. So Robert, we've now reached my favorite part of the show. We're about to enter the lightning round. And this is where I get to ask you a series of questions. And you come back at us Fire Nation style with amazing and mind-blowing answers. Sound like a plan? Sounds great. What was holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur? Initially, what was holding me back was fear. Um, You know, I was afraid that if I went after what I was passionate about and what I really wanted to do in life, that I might fail. And that was something that took me a little while to get over. But once I did, I I realized that, hey, there's, there's no turning back. This is what I love to do. This is what I'm passionate about. This is what I want to do with the rest of my life. And to just not be scared. I mean, if if you're sitting in your, in your day to day and you're miserable and you hate what you're doing, why do it? You know, quit, go do what you want to do. You're going to fail. You're going to have success. Just be passionate and be driven and, and, and just, just go after it. Well said. What's the best advice you've ever received? The best advice I ever received was to do what you love. I mean, my dad always told me, you know, you you have to do what you love. You're only on this planet for a, a short amount of time. Uh, why go through it not doing you know what you love to do? So do what you love, be passionate about it, be driven, have a great time doing it. And uh, I mean, that's the best advice that I've ever received. And I think that's the best advice that I could to give to anybody is just do what you're passionate about and do what you love. What is one specific action that listeners can take in the next 24 hours to bring them one step closer to their dreams? I think to really reflect on, on where they're at in life and if they're happy. I mean, are you happy in what you do? 
That's a question I ask myself every single day, and I can, I can be truthful when I say that I am. I'm happy in what I do. I'm excited about what I do. I wake up every morning excited to go to work, excited to build my business, and just, and just do the things that I love to do. Do you have an internet resource like an Evernote that you're just in love with that you can share with our listeners? I'm a big Google Docs guy. I mean, everything that I do is, is through Google Docs. Um, you know, I keep track of everything. Uh, you know, it, it's just all right there. So, you know, if, if you're not familiar with Google Docs, I, I highly recommend it. It's a great resource. And Fire Nation, you can find the links to this resource and everything that we mentioned in today's episode by going to eofire.com slash Robert Graham. If you could recommend one book for our listeners, Robert, what would it be? Uh, it has to be Crush It by Gary Vanderchuk. Uh, he's a big inspiration of mine. Uh, I, I, I pretty much follow everything he does. I follow him on Twitter. I, I, I watch all of his videos. And he's just, uh, I mean, he's a, he's a great role model. He really went after um, what he wanted to do. He was passionate about the wine industry, and he turned that into a booming empire. And uh, I have the utmost respect for him. And I think, he's, uh, I think he is what you should strive to be as far as, uh, you know, an entrepreneur. Absolutely. He was a great past guest on Entrepreneur on Fire. And Fire Nation, if you haven't already, you can get the audio version of this book or any book that you would like for free by going to eofirebook.com. That's eofirebook.com. So Robert, this next question is my favorite, but it's kind of tricky. So take your time, digest it, and then come back at us with an answer. Imagine you woke up tomorrow morning in a brand new world, identical to earth, but you knew no one. You mm-hmm. still have all the experience and knowledge you currently have. Your food and shelter is taken care of, but all you have is a laptop and $500. What would you do in the next seven days? Man, seven days, $500 on a laptop. You know what? I would go online. I would, uh, I would start reaching out to uh, developers and designers and I would give them a fantastic pitch on a great business idea and, and uh, I would have them join me and we would build a team and we would start building out a company and, um, you know, start, start going to a lot of social events and networking and getting in front of people and, and pitching our idea and, and start building a business. Start the hustle. I love it, Robert. And I've really enjoyed hearing your journey from commercial real estate to Arrow to Brander. You've just shared some really good knowledge, some really good insights. Give Fire Nation one parting piece of guidance. Share the best way that we can find you, and then we'll say goodbye. Uh, Be passionate about what you do. Really, I mean, you have to wake up. You have to love what you do on a day-to-day basis. Otherwise, what's the point? I mean, love what you do. Go after your dreams. I mean, really, really, you know, if you you don't like what you're doing, quit and and start doing what you do like doing because you don't want to wake up when you're 55 years old and regret the last 30 years, you know. I just really, really am a, am a big believer in, in being passionate and loving what you do. Great. And share the best way that we can find you. You can find me at Robert at BranderApp.com or you could just Google me on YouTube and, uh, and see some very cool sign spinning videos. <laughs> Robert, Fire Nation is well aware. They can find the links of everything of value that we've talked about in today's episode and your contact information by going to EO Fire. Dot com. Click on that podcast tab. You're hanging out in the archives. Robert, thank you for being so generous with your time, your expertise, and experience. Fire Nation salutes you, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Thanks. Appreciate it. Fire Nation, are you an aspiring or new entrepreneur who's looking for a community of like-minded individuals who can offer support, tools, resources, and advice as you start your entrepreneurial journey? Visit FireNationElite.com to find out more about our elite mastermind group. Fill out an application, schedule a one-on-one 15-minute chat with me, and start your journey today. And now let's give it up for our five-star reviews, DDH12, Nick Buys Houses, Ultrasound Angie, Mykola Novak, Paul Shack, The Portfolium, RK1978, A. Alther, Jeff Podcast Fan, and Kate Maine. Thank you so much for supporting Entrepreneur on Fire, and I look forward to thanking everyone who does the same. Thank you for joining us at EntrepreneurOnFire.com, your daily dose of inspiration. 
Prepare to ignite.